Can I ask you something? Are you worried about the future? Think about the last time that you watched the 9 o'clock news on TV. Did you see anything that made you feel good about yourself? Made you feel safe? Gave you those happy feelings in your stomach? Because if you did, I'd love to learn which channel you were watching. Because the last time I watched the 9 o'clock news, all I could do was worry. All that violence, that sexism, that racism, that hate, does it not upset you? I'm going to show you some statistics, and it's going to make you feel worse. Just last year, reported grave crimes increased by 10% in Sri Lanka. And crimes against women increased by 9%. Two out of every three Sri Lankan women are victims of either sexual or physical violence. Just imagine this. Out of every three women that you know, two of them are or will become victims of violence. Globally, these figures are even worse. 1.6 million people die every year due to violence. This city of Colombo has roughly 600,000 people. There's almost three times the population of this city gets wiped out due to violence every year. And a quarter of all children are abused. Just in this auditorium, it's possible that about 300 of you were abused as a child. So, what do we do about this? Well, for generations, society has thought that we can solve most of these problems through the law. Trust me. I'm a lawyer. I know I may not look like one right now, but I am. And us lawyers, we think we can solve everything through the law. I mean, don't get me wrong, the law is great, it gives me business. But can we solve all our problems through this? I don't think so. But how about if I told you that within a generation, we could have a society that was more just, was more fair, and had better chances of peace? What if I told you that within 15 years, we could have an entire new generation of young people that would have more empathy, be more compassionate and kind? They would be able to think critically and sit around a table and solve their problems peacefully. They would think better than you or me. They would think equal. Now, what if I told you that we are creating this generation right now. So, how are we doing it? Simple. It's called education. Not just any type of education, but social and emotional intelligence. What does that mean? That means teaching children basic values, just such as to have empathy, to be kind to one another, to believe in equality, and to teach them skills, such as to think critically, to solve problems peacefully, and to have some self-regulation. You see, our present education system is structured on the needs of the 19th century Industrial Revolution. We're taught maths, we're taught science, we're taught literature. But can I ask you something, A? Are we ever taught to be human beings? And this is what social and emotional learning does. It teaches children to be human beings. So, when our initiative is nothing more than an idea hatched up in the kitchen of our founder, Leslie Adwin, we wanted to create something that would have a positive, lasting impact in this world. We were sort of tired of people promising change, but never really delivering it. We were tired of people trying to find a solution to violence, but never really finding it. You see, if we are going to see a systematic generational change in how things are done in this world, then we have to change mindsets. And we can only change mindsets through education. So, where do we start? Well, the answer actually lies in neuroscience. So, neuroscience tells us that about 75% of a child's brain development takes place between the ages of three to seven. Now, this is a period of the optimal cognitive modifiability of a child. What does that mean? That means that it is during this period that a child's personality, worldviews, and value system is being formed. 
So neuroscience actually tells us that if we want to have a more enlightened human being, that this is where we should start. Therefore, this is where we did. Now, there's many studies out there which shows the incredible benefits of social-emotional learning from the early years for children. Now, one such study was supported by the US Department of Education. And what they did was they sort of created a five-point scale to test the social competency of children. And they monitored these children from the time they were in kindergarten for 20 whole years. Now, what this study found out at the end of this 20-year period was that for every one-point increase in a child's social competency, that that child was twice as likely to get a university degree, 54% more likely to actually finish school, and 46% more likely to have a full-time job by the time of 25. And it also found out that for every one-point decrease in their social competency, that that child would have a 67% higher chance of actually getting arrested in early childhood, in, sorry, in early adulthood, and had an 82% higher chance of consuming illegal substances. So with all this incredible research out there, which showed the wonderful benefits of actually teaching children social-emotional learning from an early stage, what really surprised us when we started this initiative was that we actually couldn't find a single concrete curriculum that actually taught it. So, what did we do? Well, we decided to create it ourselves. So, we reached out to Montessori, we reached out to the University of Yale, we reached out to child psychologists and neuroscientists, we brought them all together, and we created the world's first curriculum, which will teach children social and emotional learning. Today, the Think Equal subject is being piloted across schools in 18 countries around the world. Our subject is structured so that children actually learn these values and skills through experience. You can never teach a child by standing in front of a blackboard and telling the child to be more empathetic, to think critically. That doesn't work. Children love to learn through methods which they enjoy. So we use play, we use narrative, we use stories, we use games. And the results that are coming out of it are just incredible. So now you must be thinking, why is this lawyer sitting, standing here on this stage in Sri Lanka and sharing this story about this education program. Well, that's because this country, that's right, your country and my country, became the first country in the world to actually begin piloting this program from January this year. And it will become the first country in the world that will roll it out across all their schools from next year. So why did we choose Sri Lanka to be the first Think Equal country? Sadly, my story isn't very unique. You see, I was born in 1984, one year after Sri Lanka's civil war started. My whole life, just like most of yours, all I knew was war. A war that was the result of our inability to treat others with respect and with equality. A war which was the result of our lack of empathy for the lives and values of another human being. We were just a generation of lost opportunity. We were never leaders in anything. At best, we were followers. But most of the time, we were told that we weren't good enough. But with this subject, it gave me hope. Here was our chance for Sri Lanka to lead in something, in education, setting the stage for the rest of the world. And more importantly for me, it was a chance to set a foundation for a lasting and durable peace, so that the next generation does not have to go through what our generation did. And the stories coming out of Sri Lanka are just truly incredible. Now, a few weeks after we actually started piloting this subject, I had a missed call on my phone. It was Friday night, it was 10 p.m., and it was from one of the teachers that, were pilot that was piloting this subject. So I called her back. And I said, hi, I'm sorry I missed your call. And she said, oh, Aritha, great timing. I'm with six other teachers piloting this subject. And I was like, you know, it's 10 p.m. on a Friday night. Is everything OK? And she said, yes, everything's great. The results have been so incredible that they've actually come together to sort of form a support group to share their stories. 
So what she did was she passed the phone from teacher to teacher, and each one of them shared a story with me. And I'm going to share two with you. The first is about the girl with the mirror. Now, this girl, she's three and a half years old. And for the last two years, she had been covered in a rash. They've been going to the doctor for two years, and none of the medicine has been working. Her condition was so bad that her teachers tell me that they had to clean her every five to ten minutes because of the pus and the blood that was coming from her wounds. She was ostracized in class. She didn't really have that many friends. Her parents thought that she was possessed by an evil spirit. And they also thought the house was cursed and they were going to move home and take out of the school. Now, the first week's lessons are called What I Like About Me. It's to teach children to accept themselves, and to appreciate themselves, and through that, to accept and appreciate others. Now, at the end of this week's lessons, each child in the class has to take a mirror, and they look at the mirror, and they have to share with their, with their other friends what they like about themselves. Now, the teachers tell me that this girl, she would never look at herself in the mirror because she was so conscious of her condition. But in this instance, she looked at herself in the mirror, and she told everyone else in the class, I like my face. This was the first time she had said anything positive about herself. Now, that weekend, her mother saw her daughter looking at a full-length mirror at home, and saw her looking at her hands, these hands covered in this rash. She was looking at it, and she was talking to herself, and she was saying, it's okay. It's my skin. It's okay. She accepted herself. She's three and a half. I'm 33. I still haven't accepted myself. The second story I'm going to tell you is about the boy with the bags. Now, one of the things, the tools we use to teach children critical thinking and problem solving are these four bags. Now, one bag is a character bag, where children draw up and create their characters, and they pop these into their bag. The second bag is a setting bag, and it could be a piece of cloth or a piece of paper. The third bag is a problem bag, where children come up with a problem. And then the fourth bag is a solution bag, where children come up with a solution to, to the problems which they've created for their characters. Now, at the end of this week's lessons, this boy, again, who's three and a half, went to his teacher and said, Auntie, can I take these bags home, please? And the teacher said, well, we only have one set of bags. Why do you want to take this home? And the boy said, well, my parents are always having fights and arguments at home. So I think that if I take these bags and give it to them, they can find a solution to their problem. Now, sadly, the teacher did not give this boy the bags home. But then that weekend, and we know these stories because these parents actually come to school the week after and keep on asking the teachers, what did you teach my child last week? Because he or she has completely changed. So what happened that weekend was when his parents were actually having an argument, in the house, this boy, who would usually be hiding in his bedroom, actually went and confronted his parents. And he asked them, Mommy, Daddy, what's the problem? Because if there is a problem, let's find a solution. This is a three and a half year old child. What a moment of enlightenment, not just for him, but for his parents. Just imagine that if we teach every child who's three to seven, to be more empathetic, to be more compassionate, to be kind, to sit around a table and solve their problems peacefully, to be more innovative and creative. What kind of a country or even world would we have? Just imagine if each one of those children was a dot, and they would come together with all other dots, to create the fabric of Sri Lanka, or even the world. But these dots, these dots which are learning social-emotional intelligence, they're a bit more special than the other dots. 
They are more empathetic, they are more compassionate, they are problem solvers, they are innovators. Now, let's connect these dots into a wave, an unstoppable wave of change, evolving with every year of social and emotional learning. Until 17, 15 years' time, when these children turn 18, you will see a systematic generational change in the mindsets and skill sets of an entire nation. Now, I'm going to ask you again, are you still worried about the future? Because in a world which thinks equal, I kind of feel good about it. Thank you.